Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy. Oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, it's What's the Odds with Steve Renazizi. Big Sunday last week, big Sunday and Saturday coming up. It's January 19th, 2023. Uh, lots to get to, lots to go over, lots to talk about. Um, and so, look, am I wearing a Super Bowl Giants cap? Yes. Is it the Super Bowl where the Giants beat the Bills? Yes. Is that a direct indication as to what I think might happen? Yes. Oh, boy, ladies and gentlemen. Who would have thought? What are the odds? What are the odds? What are our are, are, are longer shots? Brenton winning a million dollars on fantasy football or... At the beginning of the season, saying at this point, the Giants and the Bills will be on a collision course, possibly, for the Super Bowl again. What would be a bigger long shot? What could possibly be? The, the million. The million, for Maybe. sure. I, Maybe I, I, mathematically. I almost, I almost took it down again this last week. Math, Matt, what? How much did you win, by the way? Came in 28th, which is what does uh, that pay? 1500 bucks, but... I uh, I had three different lineups. I had a Burrow lineup. I had a Josh lineup, and I had a Daniel Jones lineup. And in the Allen lineup, I leveraged uh, him having a bad game with the Dolphins' defense. And uh, in the Daniel Jones lineup, I had a little more cash, so I paid up and took the Bills' defense. And the 27 teams that finished ahead of me had the Dolphins' defense, which scored 10 more points than the Bills. And I did not uh, – if I had just kept the Dolphins defense in, I would have finished in first place by a tenth of a point. And if uh, Khalil Shakir's 54-yard catch hadn't been overturned, I would have oh. finished in second place. So it was by the blade of a grass that uh, I did not win 100000 But I got 1500 Can't complain. So I would say the Giants and Bills are probably more of a long shot than me taking it down again. Wow, dude. The hubris of this fucking guy. It it's gonna happen again. Absolute it's gonna happen dude. again. Arrogance. Again. Again. But I will say this: I have the Giants and the Bills going to the Super Bowl. In my pool, after watching this last week play out, I really believe that uh, they are both going to the Super Bowl, or they're both going to lose now this weekend. Oh my God! Well, well, let's let's just before we get to this weekend, let's talk about last weekend. Okay. Oh, all right. First off, I was in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like acting like you know, he's digging ditches all week. <laughs> I was in uh it was an emotional roller coaster, guys. I was in a uh underrated city, Greenville, South Carolina. Very lovely city, very nice. Looks like almost too nice sometimes. It looks a little David Lynchy, like uh, you know, very nice on the outside, but murders are happening on the in the inside. Uh, and thank you to anyone who came to the shows at the Comedy Zone. I had a great, great time. So I did the podcast from there. Uh, shows were fun. And then, you know, Saturday, first of all, Saturday's games. I mean, we we were one point away and one point slash complete disaster defensively slash why haven't they fired the fucking uh, the coach yet for the for the San, for the Los Angeles Chargers away from winning Lucas 300 and something bucks. We called it was five out of six games. It was 500 and change. 500 bucks. Yeah. And change one point away. Mm -hmm. Now, can I, can I be honest with you? Was I rooting for that moment for Jacksonville to do it? Yes. Completely forgetting. And I was caught up in the moment, dude. It was unbelievable. It was mm -hmm. unbelievable. Now, again, it's a disaster for you guys. Unless Jacksonville goes in and does the same thing again. They're not going to. We'll get to it. They're but not going to, Steve. Don't even tell our listeners that and give them hope 
Hey, don't spoil the ending of the show, dude. We're at the beginning. Please. <laughs> I've been in show business, okay, for a okay. long time. We got to fucking draw this thing out. But you, you got want people, everyone to turn up? You, got you want to do the picks right now? And have... You got people making bets five minutes in, and they're going to be wrong when we do the opposite at the end. They're not. They have to wait to the end. They know how this thing works. We flip shit up. We change our minds. We do our picks. <laughs> they just froze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, that's got God's getting back for him for taking the Jaguars. Exactly, you don't cheer for the Jaguars. This is the kind of know. attitude that gets people that bet a million dollars at halftime on the Chargers to win to win eleven k and then lose it all. Did you see that guy? Yeah, he doesn't deserve to have money. Yeah, you don't that man do does that. Not. You don't do that ever. It's the stupidest shit. You make bets to win easy money. You don't make bets mm -hmm. to, to win a small amount wagering a shitload. You put 20 bucks down to win a million. Like the, the there was the guy that uh, he he bet every game. Oh, Steve's gone. He bet every game um, to to predict the first touchdown scored, and he got all of them correct except for the Vikings-Giants. And that was, uh, I don't know if you saw Jefferson stretch the ball out he, that was his pick. Uh -huh. He stretched the ball out, uh -huh. and he was maybe a half a yard short, and he would have turned, I think it was $43 into $1.1 million. The same guy? It's, no, not the same guy. Okay, okay, okay. It's, 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 it's a different bet. I'm saying, I'm saying be that guy where you bet be very, guy. very little to win a crazy amount. Don't be the guy that bets a lot to win very little. That's just stupid. But you also said any time touchdown bets are sucker bets, right? Yeah, because you're you're predicting something that you can't really predict. Right. But first touchdown scored is just stupid. That is you telling Vegas to take my uh -huh. money. But if you want to have fun and do it because the odds are crazy, go ahead. I'm just saying don't uh -huh. don't wager your entire life on a stupid bet that obviously with Brandon Staley is the head coach can fuck you. That's the one I mixed. I missed Jackson, or I got Jacksonville, but I missed the Bucks. Oh, you're that, right about Brady. That one wasn't even close, and I'm sure. I know I, that was more. That was more a Dallas hatred bet than a than a Bucks are good That's bet. Why you can't bet? <laughs> it's going to sound like a hypocrite, I, 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 but you can't bet with your heart, Lucas. No, I know, but I don't, I don't think Dallas is that good. I think Dak is due for a stinker, and I don't think Mike McCarthy's a great coach. I think he had his stinker the week before with Washington. Yeah, that was true. a stinker, and and the Bucks played exactly how the Bucks have played the entire season. They were not a good team. You're talking about they finished uh, eight and ten on the season, and they played in arguably the second worst division, but maybe the worst division. Okay. What's the worst division? The AFC South. I would Both say the, the AFC South AFC South was bad, but uh, the NFC South was was worse. Yeah, I mean, there you are. Well, you were in the midst of telling me how right I was, and then somehow no, you got what booted. happened was you were giving away the ending of the show, and then look what happens. I died, but yeah. I came back to life. No, my computer's dead. I've been trying to fucking uh, uh, DeMar Hamill and this thing back to life, but it ain't happening. Jesus, Steve. And so, what? <laughs> it's true truth. He, we're out of the woods on this thing, dude. It's a fucking the unbelievable man's story. Still on oxygen. I didn't know okay, it was but now. guess what? My computer isn't. It's fucking dead, dude. <laughs> it's um, dead. We were just discussing just like my dog, uh, which I we... got his ashes back. Oh, by the way, I got Mickey's ashes, dude. Now I'm still tr struggling to find. They have 150 Labrador urns, but mm -hmm. they don't have a bagel urn. I want a ba an urn in the shape of a bagel. He loved bagels. We would get bagels. He would, <laughs> he would steal one. Right? He wouldn't eat it. He would go in the backyard and bury it. I don't know in his fucking where in the, in his brain, he got his wires crossed up that bagels were bones or whatever. But he like in our yard, we have literally fifty thousand bagels in any house that we ever lived in, buried in the yard somewhere. Bagels. He digs them up, digs a hole, puts the bagel in there. So I want to get him a bagel urn, but I can't find one. So. Um, in any case, my computer's dead, but I'm not. I'm back. I'm opinionated, and you're fucking 
just relax, okay, is all I'm saying. Let's cover this weekend before we get to the next weekend, okay? Two things. I want to bask in a little bit of glory first. Did what? you see the worst bet and the best bet that were made this weekend? Um, I saw the worst one, and I don't know if you can argue against this one, that <laughs> whoever has expendable cash of $1.4 million and says, how do I make a quick $14,000? <laughs> uh, and I guess he bet $1.4 million to win essentially $14,000 at the 27 to nothing point of the Jacksonville Jaguars game. And eventually lost one point four, which is good, dude. That's uh, that's that's dumb, dumb fee. Yeah, that is like you're not get like if you need fourteen thousand dollars that badly right away that you're just willing to do it. Like like that's not even a Wall Street like fucking you know hustler Wolf of Wall Street cunt would tell you like not a good play, dude. One point four million. On something you don't absolutely know to be sure, give me a break, dude. What if, what if something, God forbid, tragic happened, like again with that, and they stopped the game, and they, and then like they just held on to your one point four million dollars till they figured out what they want, you know, like just what it's just bad shit, like it, it's stupid. But I like the play. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I would if I was sitting right next to him. I'd be like, dude, go for you it. got Don't. this, dude. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would have fist pumped him. I would have been uh, like, dude. I'm like, this is how people make money on fourteen thousand dollar bets at a time. This is how you chip away. You take that fourteen grand, you buy your wife something nice. That's probably what he thought he was going to do. Something stupid. Yeah. Did, probably trying did to show off. Did you see off. the best bet that almost was? No. What was that? Tell me what some, you think. That some was. guy took forty three dollars and change, and he guessed the first touchdown scorer of every game, and he got all but one of them right. It was in your Giants game. He had Justin Jefferson scoring the first touchdown, and I don't know if you remember at the start of that on that first drive, Jefferson yeah. stretched the ball and was a half a yard oh, away. Yeah. And if Justin Jefferson had scored that first touchdown, the guy would have walked with one point one million. Wow. I mean, he was as close as we were to Luke winning. I mean, it's just, it's only because he's going to win 1.1 million. We bet 50 to win 500. Yeah. And we were one point away. And it's the same thing. I mean, really, like, what, what, watching that game, did you at any point think to yourself, like, because I, now here's the deal I'm in the middle of Greenville doing shows. So, I'm watching – I did have a great setup. The green room was, like, the VIP area of, like, what is the club that's attached to this place. So I have, like, TVs and, like, big leather chairs. I look like a fucking gangster watching these – oh, excuse me. I'm trying to fucking pound out the lunch watching these these, uh, these games. So I'm into them, fully invested, until I got to go on stage. Then I got to get off, you know, and then I'm done. So I'm watching this saying to myself, this is a disaster. Like you, like you, you're like, oh, this isn't. I thought they would show up a little bit. I'm like, I'm a little disappointed in Jacksonville going on stage, twenty seven to nothing. I'm a little disappointed getting off stage with four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Couldn't even believe what I, 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 and I couldn't go back and watch. Like I, I watched highlights and stuff, but I couldn't believe like how poorly it wasn't just like that they were bad. Like, it looked like – and they have no chance of winning because one of their best players, if not the best player on the team, the most important player, is playing the worst game I've ever seen anyone play in the playoffs. Four mm-hmm. picks, three to the same guy in the first half, and you're saying to yourself, well, let's just try to got, not get embarrassed. That's probably what everyone is thinking. Please try not to, like, let's, let's try to – you know, we're at home, for God's sakes. Let's bridge the gap to embarrassment and try to land there. And, I mean, I, I don't really know. I haven't really gone back and watched because I've watched the Giants game, and we'll get to that. But, like, what was it Was it a defensive breakdown? Was it the fact that he just flipped a switch and was just making better decisions and throws? What, what happened? What was he, the third quarter? Yeah, he played a much better second half. He was making plays, uh, but the issue was Brandon Staley, and he's – Fired his offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach. 
So I guess they were to blame yeah, for it, them. Isn't it in hit? Like, how are they not look, looking at him going, this is like – they lost in the playoffs last year in a fucking nail biter because Justin Herbert has spoken out and says he wants Brandon Staley around. So he hasn't lost the locker room. If the locker room was against him, he'd be gone. But apparently the players still really like him. And he did enough this season not to get fired. It's just uh, the first I mean, drive. But, they, but, but Steve, the first but drive of the third quarter is at, where on. he lost the game. If I'm, if I'm asking Justin, if I'm Justin Herbert, I would, I would say to him as, as his agent, go, do you like Brandon Staley more than you like Sean Payton? Because I'm sure he'd be very interested in his job. You know, in fact, you, yeah, you, and you know, next all, year, all... next year when Brandon Staley is fired, Sean Payton will come in. Sean Payton's not I mean, taking. It waste doesn't look like Sean Payton's good because he likes this he likes guy. This guy. He's got no, a good dude, team. This guy, look, the, the way it's working out with these with these, uh, you know, younger uh, flash. I'm not flash in the pan. Uh, coaches but is it started with the McVay and then the Kill- Cliff Kingsbury's and then the fucking guy down in uh you know in um not I'm mean, Shanahan's different Shanahan's built on a, a you know a brand but the rest of these guys that are just sort of like the cool guy what's going on with this is like these guys are getting these jobs and either they're making their mark in the first the first three years Zach Taylor goes to the fucking Super Bowl Right in his first couple of years, Sean McVay gets to the Super Bowl. Like you've got to get to the Super Bowl in the first couple of years, or it's not going to work. It's not that's not the guy for you. And he has had multiple opportunities now, Staley. Multiple opportunities to get this right with a very talented team. And I mean, look, I, I don't know, I you. What are they going to get? Maybe the AFC championship game next year and let them blow it. Maybe they have a 14 point lead in Kansas city. And then we're all talking about how Kansas city came back or the bills came back to defend their super bowl title, whatever it is. I'm just saying like, I I don't know what, it what the, but I don't think it's Brandon Staley. And I don't know what they want to do. That's fine. But to counter that argument, you've seen how bad coaching is in the NFL this year. Yes. Yeah, there's a I lot mean, of really bad teams... coaches. So you're gonna fire a guy that took you to the playoffs, and then hope that you're gonna get Sean Payton from three years ago, and it's also gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Like that's the argument against it. And if the guy who is the leader in your locker room, the the your star quarterback that is going to be a superstar in three years, and and run the league potentially with the top guys, and he says, "I like this guy. I want him here." Are you going to get rid of him to go and get a relative unknown? Because, again, he hasn't coached in several years. And is he going to be the same coach he was when he was winning with Drew Brees? We don't know. Look, the fan base in San Diego and in L.A., I keep fucking it up, is never going to stand up for themselves. They're never going to shout and scream. But if this – could you imagine if this was fucking Philly and they lost 28 nothing? If Philly loses – has a 27 nothing lead to the Giants and they fucking lose – what what do you th- like? Are, do you think they'd be happy with like a coordinator getting the boot? They're gonna want fucking heads to roll. Yeah. So but it's because that's why it's not the base. fans' decision. And, oh, and okay, but hello, we're we. I want heads to roll. I would want fucking heads to roll. If the Giants had a twenty-eight nothing lead, I would want fucking heads to roll. I understand we had a great season, but like, dude. You got that is a fuck up of a beyond. You gotta protect that fucking lead. You have to. You gotta do that. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, it's the same so, trap the Bills fell into last year against the Chiefs. They got a lead and they didn't run the ball. Chargers did not have a running game this year, and it killed them in the end. But I really think when Brandon Staley decided to punt instead of kick a 50-yard field goal on that first drive in the second half, that's where he lost the game. Well, how does Cam Akers have the most touchdowns in the league if they don't have a running game? Cam Akers uh, plays for the Rams. But Austin oh, oh, I mean, Eckler. Eckler. Eckler, yeah. What's his name? The other how one. Many, from Steve, how many of those were receiving touchdowns? And then also – I have no idea. How many of those – we're inside the five yard line because Herbert would drive down the field and then Eckler would just take an easy handoff and scamper in. 
It, they don't I, have a, again. They don't have a running game. I don't know the That's why they lost. I'm they did not is, run the ball. They did not control the ball, and they made the game longer for Jacksonville instead of shortening it. Well, and they also lost fucking Lucas. Tons of cash. Yeah. Tons of cash. Well, to be fair, so, Lucas Lucas had the Jaguars, so he did. I guess. He, I mean, we could have uh, done that. We would have. Yeah, he didn't have more sod, but I just, you know, like I felt like. I, I said to myself, they're up no. pointing nothing to go. We're going to get this right, dude. Chargers should not have won. <laughs> the Chargers should not have lost that game. That that was inexcusable, and that's why the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach are now gone. And look, what happened with you guys? You got a, probably a little bit emotional, a little bit of you know excited. Mm-hmm. It, it was way closer than you thought. Um, but again, you have the the best player, one of the top players on the planet, to help out and figured it out at the end. I, again, I don't like play like. I don't like playing division rivals in the playoffs. Not when you've played them three times or twice already, you know? Yeah. And close. If you're, if you're the underdog, though, I think you do. Like, if you're yes. if you're the Giants this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll get to you guys this weekend. We'll get to us this weekend. Um, then what, would we, what do we have on Sunday? The first game was uh, – First game on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday was the Bills. The Bills. The Bills, okay. Then the Giants, look. This is another one. My show is at 6 fucking p.m. on Sunday, you know, because the good the good, good Lord wants everyone home in bed for the fuck, you know. On, 6 p.m.? 6 p.m., yeah. <clears throat> so the game started at fucking 4.30, something, whatever. So, you know, I watched the first half, and then, boom, halftime happens. I got to go on stage. Now, the first half, I thought, I'm like, the first drive, I was like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. Either we're in trouble or this is going to be a fucking slugfest because they mo- they walked down our throats the first drive. But then when we turned around and we fucking just, you know, we gave him the, the, um, the fucking the fist from Back to the Future. Who am I thinking of? Fucking when he's just like, not today, Biff. Not today. When he just turns around McFly and he just goes fucking boom. Said no, we're not going to get beat up. We're not going to crumble. We're going to go run the ball down your fucking throat, and that's what they did. A couple great passes, but they ran the ball, and I go, oh shit, they're not getting beat. They're getting mad, and I loved it from that point. I go, all right, we're here. This is going to be a. And it was back and forth, great first half, and then I just, I mean, look, the second half continuously not giving up, staying in the game, competing. And the fact that, yeah, there were some questionable situations, some questionable calls on both ends. Um, But to me, I'm like, okay, the big one was the Giants had, no, the the, 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 uh, the Vikings were like on the, the 19 or something in the red zone, fourth and one, false start moves it back. They got to kick a field goal instead of going, for and you know and then they had tied the game at 24 that to me a big big stop big a like, huge like the giants of last year would have jumped off sides and given them the fucking first down mm-hmm. and the, the the game plan that day ball and uh and homeboy came up with what's his name kapke Kaf- i don't know how to say it. Kaf- all these guys have shown day ball kapke kapke they came up with with the layered fucking routes these guys ran it just it, – it was – you're not dealing with superstars. But you, ha- you there's almost no argument to be made that he is not working with and getting the most out of the least product. All yeah, these guys – He's coach of the all year. All these receivers, yes, are, can catch footballs. Everyone that makes it, tries out, gets a fucking invite to a camp is better than anyone you've ever seen catch footballs in real life for the most part. Unless, you know, you're, you know, you're a pro. So – these, but there are obviously receivers, Justin Jefferson, that make unbelievable plays that you're like, that's beyond anyone's comprehension. But when you put a guy who can catch a football and can move around and is athletic in a, in a situation where that's all he has to do, and then maybe he'll have an opportunity to run upfield and make something else happen, good things happen. They're not asking more from these guys than they can possibly do. They're putting them all in the right situation to succeed. And, like, to me, like, what 
how could you coach any better than that? Making guys believe they're going to win and then putting them out there in situations where they can. It's us. It, we're going to take on the world, dude. We're going to take on the world. And when you have a quarterback who I've said from the very beginning, and I think we can go back and thank God this podcast <laughs> is here because I've been a Danny Dimes fan from the very beginning and everybody knows this. Have you? I mean, there's there's some there's some episodes missing from our archive, uh, Steve. I don't know what happened Look, to them. We've, all right, we've had our ups and downs, some rocky relationships, but again, it wasn't necessarily all there his fault. Danny Nichols and Danny Penny's thrown around, if I recall correctly. Yes, Danny Shekels. So I'm I'm saying I'm, <laughs> I'm watching this game and I'm going, when is he going to fuck it up? When is he going to fuck it up? When is he going to have a turn? And dude. He put his head down and fucking beat it up, both physically, mentally, emotionally. Kept his fucking. Uh, I mean, do you remember somebody? Remember Josh Allen's first playoff game? We were talking about that. Lucas came over entirely to watch the more, Bills game. It, the lateral, entirely no more physical, physically gifted than Daniel Jones. Way yeah. more physically gifted than Daniel Jones. But you know. Got a little bit above his head, you know, uh, on the road. Oh, what am I going to do? The crowd, I'm going to try to do more than I can. He was poised. And I don't know if it was the chat with Eli, which probably helped out because I heard what their conversation was about and it made perfect sense. Don't do more than you can do. It's a regular football game. Just, you know, the outcome is, is means more. And so he, his running and like, the ability to scramble and the ability to get first downs and the ability to continue to move the chains, hold possession, keep that fucking Justin Jefferson on the sideline was like he. It was almost like the in the in the eight, the Giants were built on a strong defense and run the ball. Strong D de- and it was always a running back. Now we got a great running back who's electric, but we also have another guy who we need to on those third and twos can go out of the pocket and and sprint for a first down. Yep. And what he lacks to, to Josh Allen physically gifted, he makes up for we're being tough, dude. He's not as tough as Josh Allen, but he's fucking up there, dude. Because he goes face head first into some of these guys and some of these tackles, and he doesn't give a shit. And he seems to be able to just get back up. Knock he's on wood. He's faster, too. He's a little faster. He might well. I mean, he's twenty-two miles an hour until he trips and falls on the fucking ground. So, <laughs> lest you forget, but I but, mean, uh, it, it is a testament to how good of a coach Brian Dable is that he came in and in one season took a guy that I think most of New York was like, we don't want him. He's trash. It was a trash pick, and now his numbers are comparable to Josh's at the same point in his career with Dable working with Josh. So in in the back half of this season, his passing statistics were a lot better with he no, re- no receivers. So what you need to do is you need to go win yourself. Well, you're not going to win the Super Bowl. You're going to lose to the Bills, but you need to win yourself the NFC Championship. And then you need to go and trade for DeAndre Hopkins, who seems like he doesn't want to be in Arizona anymore. Go get that yourself D Hop. Wonderful. And that is going to be a scary team to deal with. Your well, defense has problems DM. too, but but yeah, get yourself got, a, yes. a wide receiver. One Hodgins is is a guy. That guy doesn't drop passes, and now I'm kind of disappointed that the Bills got rid of him. Um, well, Hodgins is yeah, be a good that's what I'm saying. Player. He doesn't have to be on, on the Bills. He probably was like, you know, there's some guys who are the guys. He, was, he like, was like the seventh on the depth chart, and really now looking at him, he should have maybe been fourth. When you get compared to Stefan Diggs and guys like that, it's tough to stand out. But yeah. when you really get compared to guys that are at your level, because that's really all we have right now. And Kenny, Kenny Galladay. Galladay. And that's it. You Who, know, by the like, way, well, that, that touchdown, his first touchdown yes. as a giant was a hell of a catch. So maybe if, maybe if they didn't have shit coaching and game plans last season, he could have emerged a little bit and then not gone into this season with a terrible attitude. Which it seems exactly. like that's that's what got him buried in the depth yes. chart was Dable didn't yes. want to deal with his shit. Yeah, what? Because the talent is there. Themselves. Yeah, the talent's there. It's just the attitude was horrible. Just and because you you're making the, the most money guy. out of all of us doesn't mean you can go around treating everybody and, and acting like you're better than everybody. We're all shit up at this point. Yeah, and we're not anymore. 
And that's why you see him make a block like he did for Saquon the other day. You go, oh, man, this guy's buying in. Thank God. Yeah. You know, because, hey, you never know, dude. You never know. You're fucking down three points to the fucking uh, um, 49ers in the NFC Championship. And you're at the 20-yard line. And he runs the perfect route and and becomes the Kenny Galladay of 2018 when what's-his-name was thrown in the ball, Stafford. Mm-hmm. And goes up and jumps higher than everybody else because he can and makes a ball grab better than anybody else because he can. That's all you got to do one time. Come down with it, the defense thing, and we go to the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's and because now he's bought into it, he'll be there when he it, he'll be ready when he needs to, when he's yeah. called upon. Um, I do owe an apology to, and I can't believe I mean, look, this is a this is this comes with. You know, a little bit of a like, you know, I'm not 100 percent on this apology, but Dave Gettleman. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps as far as talent uh, goes, he might be able to understand who's talented and who's not. Not all the time. He missed. He missed on a couple. He missed on the fucking uh, the lineman that we picked first a couple years ago. So and he's had a couple misses. Uh, fucking, uh, he's still around the league. But the guy that keeps getting injured from Ohio State, the um, the the cornerback that we had, oh, at Eli Apple, miss in my estimation. But the guys that we thought, maybe the Daniel Jones, maybe the Andrew Thomases, these guys might be misses. These guys are now built into you know Andrew Jones is an All Pro. He he also drafted Dexter Lawrence, who's now become an All Pro. Eli, I mean, um, uh, Daniel Jones is now. You know, looking like he could, he's our quarterback. He's going to be the guy. He, I think he's our guy. And it would be, he, he shot, he made himself a lot of money on Sat on Sunday mm-hmm. because whether the Giants are going to, someone's going to pay him. And I was saying he's a $20 million quarterback. He's going to get $30 million now, at least a year. And that's the way it's going to be. And they're going to have to franchise Saquon and he's not going to be happy about it, but we'll deal with that later. But, he made himself a lot of money, he, and, and he's proven himself to be something that is reliable, durable, and dependent. And he's done everything improvement-wise, you've asked him. Cut down on the turnovers, been healthy, and, you know, not, not uh, you know, and run the ball and run an offense. And so, look, Gettleman, he, would I have drafted him in the first round or, the you know, the top 10 picks? Probably not. You know, quality and 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 – draft wise and also get them can't pick a coach so you know there's that but now it's like it looks like with the right coaches with the right system some of these guys end up being some quality fucking football players and so you know i don't want him back but maybe he's not the fucking worst person in the world and you know who knows what happens? The Galladay thing, and now let Joe Shane, Shane go find some some. I mean, obviously the guy can find talent. He he found it off the the you know the scrap pile in Buffalo. Half our team is Buffalo scrap pile. Yeah, which is great. So yeah, if you do end up winning the Super Bowl, it's really like the Bills won the Super Bowl. We should get yeah. like at least a quarter of that Super Bowl. Yeah. But oh, you're not gonna you're well. not gonna win the Super Bowl. You're gonna lose to the Bills. It's gonna be forty to nothing, and uh, oh. Tamar, Tamar Hamlin's gonna be handed the Lombardi Trophy. You think Brian be... Dable's gonna let his old squad put a fucking nutmeg on his team? A zero? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Steve. It's just I this, I have a, that a very powerful is not gonna computer. Age I have a very powerful computer that runs the simulations and the bills are taking the Super Bowl by 40 points. We're two wins away from this being a possibility. So you better mark your words. Um, but what did you think about the, the Balt? I didn't really watch. I fell asleep during the second half of the Baltimore game. Cause I had an early flight on Monday. So um, what uh, was it? What did the, did the Bengals not look as good as they should? Should they have, or is that another, situation where it's division rivals playing for the third time in a year and it's just always going to be close uh the the latter i think uh more so than the they they didn't play their best game by far but yeah the ravens played them really tough and they obviously know them well 
Um, and in all honesty, the Ravens should have won that game. That was uh, unfortunate that Tyler Huntley made a very poor decision. And uh, Greg Roman, who is now fired, should have been fired a long time ago, just is not a good play caller. The Ravens had that game. Um, the Bengals lost another offensive lineman, so they're down. Yeah, three. Jonah Williams, right? Yep, so they're down three now. Um, so that didn't help. That really affects the run game, and then that affects the timing of uh, Burrow yeah. waiting for Chase or Higgins to get open. Um, but with, he says he says with a wry smile. Yeah, I mean that's. I, mean, I, back, I think. They're... Look, I think in all honesty, this this game against Buffalo this weekend is going to be a very tight game, but because of the problems with their offensive line. And it's not like Cincinnati's offensive line has been stellar anyway. That was the big knock last year. And then they went out, they got all these big pieces, and they didn't really gel, and they haven't played great. Burrow's still getting hit, and Buffalo has holes in their secondary. But that defensive line, they get to the quarterback. So um, they're going to shut down Mixon, and Burrow's going to have to rush throws. That's how Buffalo wins the game. And it's probably pretty tight. Um, but that's why they lose. It's because they just they lost too many pieces up front. But uh, with they're the Ravens, almost back to like the way they were last year at the Super yeah, Bowl, like where they were about. Like decimated on the front line. But with the Ravens, um, you know, all the bad play calling aside, they drove down the field when they wanted to on that defense with their backup quarterback, who yeah. had not he had not played well up until that game. He how many games did he start? Like five games with Lamar out. And he looked terrible in all of them, um, but he played a great game. It's just when they got down to the goal line and it wasn't the half yard line. It was like at the two yard line, he decides I'm going to jump over the top with everyone bunched together instead of spreading it out. He had two giant ass guys behind him. They could have pushed him in. Um, they could have handed the ball off to J.K. Dobbins. I don't know why they kept bringing in Justice Hill, the third running back to take snaps and to take uh, rushes and I don't know why they kept giving it to Gus Edwards, who would just fall forward. But there was like a there was a third and two call where they did an end around with Mark Andrews, who's slow as shit. And it made yeah. no sense. It's like if you're going to do that, then just give it to Gus Edwards, who's the same size or give it to Patrick Ricard, who's like 400 pounds. Why are you giving it to Mark Andrews? And it fooled nobody. You lose two yards. That's why Roman's gone. But. Honestly, J.K. He, Dobbins was not happy after, you know, with the no, he should have. Like he should have. He's completely correct to be upset. He should have been given the ball more. He was having a great game. He looked like J.K. Dobbins before his injury again. He he, he had burst. He was hitting the holes well, uh, you know, and, and they're bringing in Justice Hill like, oh, he's the catching running back. But J.K. Dobbins had a receiving touchdown. So honestly, we should be playing the Ravens this weekend. It was just Really bad coaching and, yeah. and bad decision making. And and again, Tyler Huntley, when everyone's bunched together and you got two big guys behind you, you just put your head down and let them push you in. You don't jump over the top because the defense is bunched. There's no lanes to jump through. You got to spread out the offense if you're going to go over the top. Coach Biddlecombe says, hit the line, all you boys. Let's you just, go. No, it's, you just put your head down and you let the big guys push you in. And you let the big guys push you in, dude. That's how as it a, works. As a small person – that's what I would do. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a hero. Just push me in. Did, did the uh, result of the Cowboys and the Bucks surprise you at all? Did not surprise me. I kind of thought that was did, coming. Did Lucas, you, did you what, listen last week to what I said? I know, Lucas. What did you think, man? I mean, you must be. Were you baffled by that, or was it disappointing I, to you? I, I told Brent. I just thought, you know, I I believe in the Brady magic and that he would come through in the playoffs, and he didn't. That's not how where... this works. This is not. Yeah. Your feelings. And what happened last year or 10 years ago, it doesn't matter. The playoffs are right now. This play, this next play, Brady played I like just, shit all I'm, season. And in this did. game, he played like shit. That is a bad football Jesus, team. Jesus, verbal should abuse. should not have been in the postseason. What do you work for, Giselle's lawyers? My God, dude. Yes. Yeah. I'm team Giselle all the way. He should have retired mean, two years ago. But is Dallas that good? Is Dallas that good? Dallas is okay. They're they're a solid team. They have they have 
good players on both sides of the ball. They're not a great team by any means, but they played. A no, they're team. capable of putting up a big old ship pile too. They can, they've done it before. Dallas, they lost Dallas them. had a run where they, I think for like four or five games this year, they were the highest scoring team for that stretch. So their offense can move the ball. They can score points. Their defense has some decent players. Micah Parsons is one of the best in the league. So they can get some turnovers. They're not a great team, but you look at what Tampa Bay did all year. Tampa Bay could not run the ball. They were dead last in the league. You got a 45-year-old quarterback. He threw the ball 66 times on Monday. That's insane. Yeah, I know. That's 66, a record, right? Six, yeah. And that's that's with the Cowboys kicker missing every extra point. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was what it was the fuck? Painful and you it said- didn't matter. You stopped sending him out there after three misses, right? What's the I don't know how. Where, yeah. So what? What yeah. was? Wh- wh- which is the last? Did he miss? Was it he missed four in a row and they gave him the fifth one, or they? When he did missed, he miss the fifth one? It, he didn't miss five. <laughs> I mean, when did yeah. he? When did he make one? Was it like four it was, in a row? It was the, yeah. It was the fifth one he made. Because I was I watching. I can't believe uh, they let the him Manning. go out there. Yeah, I was watching the Manning cast, and that was the giddiest I've ever seen Eli get. Was right before he finally made the kick. What? Why would they ever let him go back out? I mean, I would never because let him go back out. He's your guy, and you got to get his mind right because you're playing San Francisco next week, and you're going to need him to make those kicks. Was it close the last kick? I didn't see it. Um, I don't really remember. I think it was probably fairly close, but um, oh. I mean, he made it. That's all that. It doesn't matter. It's 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 an inch or perfectly down the middle. It it still went through. So hopefully he's over that because I I like him. He's a good guy. He had a good season. Um, he only missed three of them. I can't believe that. That's crazy. Absolutely nuts that he went, missed. I mean, it was like I thought it was a joke the way he was missing too. They weren't even yeah. fucking close, dude. All they weren't wide, even like all wide right. The first two wide right, then the third one he missed way left, like shanked it left, trying to overcompensate. And then the fourth one was just barely over the top of the upright on the right side. Um. All right, well, let's get to this weekend then. Let's fucking hash it out. Well, We've got you don't want to talk games. about. Uh, do you think uh, Brady retires? No. So where's he going? Because he's not staying in Tampa, right? Miami or or Las Vegas, one or the other. Probably Miami's Las Vegas. Already, Miami already said Tua is coming back. Then it's going to be Las Vegas, but you know Miami is like they can always like. They'll until Tua goes. Oh, my brain doesn't feel good, and this and that. Like they, they'll always if they if they want if Tom's like, look, I really love to come there, and if Tua's not feeling great, then let me know. But and if they, you know, there was I, I wouldn't put it past them to change their minds. But I think Vegas. It was almost on the table before everything happened with Gruden. Why not? It's another uh, no tax state. He he wants to win. He's not going to go to Vegas because he wants to win. What he about the want Jets? To, the Jets are a possibility, yeah. I think the Jets are on the table because they have the good offensive line. They have offensive weapons. They have a great defense, great coach. That's definitely on the table. The yeah, Colts, I think, are Jets, on the table. But the Raiders, the Raiders, no way. Well, the Jets know they need a quarterback, and if they can't get somebody this next year, then Brady's like a Band-Aid one-year bridge where maybe they can make the playoffs. But if the, I'm the, the Raiders, Jets, I want Raiders Derek Carr and win Raiders, team next year. The Raiders yeah, the Jets, have Tom Brady. The Jets should go get Derek Carr. If the Jets are smart, they'll go get Derek Carr. If the GMs are smart. They know that Brady is a pocket passer, and that's not how games are won anymore. Look at Daniel Jones. I'll tell you this. That's the new NFL. Brady can't move in the pocket, and he can't evade the rush. And because he can't do that, his receivers don't have time to get open, so that's why he throws the ball in like 1.4 seconds. And him and Mike Evans, that whole game, no chemistry whatsoever. It was just because Brady didn't have time to throw the ball. There was no time for Evans to run his route. So he needs an offensive line. That's why I don't think he goes to Vegas. He could go to the Jets. And they might be desperate enough to take him just to get fans excited and buy jerseys and tickets. The the excitement here and the sports talk radio, all the Jets fans, they all want Lamar. All their eggs are in the Lamar basket. They That's should the one go they... get Derek Carr. He'll cost you less. Oh, he GM Brent says Derek Carr. He can throw the ball. 
Lamar Jackson has still not proven he can throw outside the lines. And he's one hit away from now. You just paid a guy $300 million and he's out for seven weeks, which is what's happening right now. Lamar Jackson. And that's everything in the NFL. Lamar Jackson I mean, probably probably beats the Bengals if he is healthy. But because of his style where he's running all the time, he's more susceptible. You need a guy that can throw, and Derek Carr can scramble a little bit. I have a feeling that if Lamar Jackson had $300 million already in his pocket from the Bengals, he would have been out there last fucking Saturday playing and might have and probably beaten the Bengals. So I'm not saying that you, you don't get – if you, the Jets give him what he wants and make him happy monetarily, then he they're going to get off. I, I think he's a – you get my all when I am happy, and yeah. which is usually – so. So you think um, Lamar Jackson is out in Baltimore? I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I would say I, originally I would I was like, oh, it's going to be sixty forty. He's going to stay. They'll figure something out. Mm-hmm. I think it's le- I think it's sixty forty. He's leaving now. Between fifty and fifty fifty and sixty forty that he's leaving because. I don't, you know, there was a point made about like him being his own agent. It's like you have an agent that you, because they sort of buffer the shit you don't want to hear. He's been hearing from them like the stuff, like you know, owners and 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 organizations come up with reasons that why they don't want to pay you the money that you want, you know, and you don't necessarily want to hear that like you're the eighth best quarterback that they think statistically in this, or you're likely to get hurt all the time or whatever you don't want. So usually your agent, they, they, they don't tell you that they hold on to that. They just tell you the offer and this and that, and you know, it all works out, but he's hearing that. So I think that is tough. And I think when you hear from a team that's like, you've known forever and criticism coming from them, it was almost like the Derek Jeter thing, like criticism coming from them. He heard it. But that was through the press. This is going to be directly telling to his face. Like, we're not, we're not, we don't think you're worth that because here's, here's, here, why, 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 why. So when, when you hear that, and then all of a sudden you get offers from the Jets who it's like, hey, we're not going to meet your demands, but we really love you. And so, like, let's just talk about money and where we can meet because we think you're the fucking shit. You know, like, that feels better of taking a little less money there than you maybe want because all they're going to do is blow smoke up your ass. Versus you having to hear why you're not welcome where you are right now for X, Y, and Z reasons. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and as a Bills fan, I hope that happens. I would much rather play Lamar twice than Derek Carr, in all honesty. So I just don't believe in Lamar's talent as a quarterback. He's a great runner, great athlete, maybe the best athlete in football. But realistically, how many more years of him being able to run like that does he have? Eventually, he's going to break down. That's why Josh Allen needs to become more and more, and he has more of a pocket passer, and you've seen him take the ball and and run a lot less this year. You have to evolve into your age, and Lamar maybe has two great seasons of running left in him, and then he's just going to be okay for a while, and then he's going to be really bad because he can't throw. I mean, I I, I don't wish anyone – uh, injury or you know i wish him health but it's like i i think that they're built to win like sooner than later mm-hmm. like they see what the giants are doing and they go like we're we're more talented on paper and if we yeah, had the right guy to run in more the talented, ship, yeah yeah so um you know it's a tougher conference and obvious maybe not division but conference even though our division our our it's you know three out of the four representatives from the nfc come from the fucking nfc so yeah Oh, it's uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, doesn't, I want it doesn't say a lot though. Yeah, it doesn't um, say I a want... lot. You're just saying that with a big brag and a nice stretch. They look at the teams that didn't make it into the playoffs in that conference. It doesn't say a lot that there's three. Someone has to be in Washington. The almost made it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> with Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke. That's how bad the oh, NFC wow. was. It's so top heavy. It's insane. Oh my God! Look at you. You haven't won shit yet. I keep your mouth shut till after the season's over, buddy. There's an NFC team that can come down there and whoop any one of your asses. We, 
And that team's the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. That's the only one that can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, before we get to – I want to talk about the Super Bowl for a second. I want to – because before we get to the date. Uh, so I am – going to do a show super bowl weekend in phoenix at the stand-up live comedy club friday two shows saturday two shows uh it's a last minute thing i think they have a you know an opening they you know they weren't sure if there was going to be a need for comedy or the room by the nfl and so they have a free two nights so i'm going to come in there and do shows so the uh tickets will go on sale today and uh, or whenever you're hearing this so they'll be on sale um and so yeah two shows friday two shows saturday super bowl weekend in phoenix also waste management weekend so lots of shit going on lots of people in town so if you know someone going let them know come down to the show the room is massive so there'll be plenty of fucking room so just get tickets and have fun um also all the, yourself no but i'm saying like you know it's like everyone it's like every there's a lot going on so You'll be looking for something to do, and it's going to be fucking fun. We're not going to be as chaotic as the rest okay. of the places. That's what I'm saying. We're, there's oh, a better I know way to, yeah, to be there's a better way to say that. We're going to have a fucking blast. But, you know, it's Super Bowl weekend. You're going to be sold it's out. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It, the room's big, but that would be great. If we were sold out. Um, You're going to be sold out. Maybe. If You're I'm gonna... sold out, it's Giants, Bills, and the Super Bowl. Come on now. If Giants and the Bills make it a Super that's Bowl, that's what's happening. I hate to spoil Look, we'll it get for to everyone that in a second. Ruin the next two weeks of football, but that's what's happening. But before that, I'll be in Albany next weekend at the Funny Bone. Um, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday again. Uh, banging into Albany for the night. And then also just added to my schedule, which is big for me. Uh, first show in a long time on Long Island. Governor's, well, not Governor's. I'm not doing Governor. I'm doing McGuire's Comedy Club, which is part of the Governor's franchise. But McGuire's Comedy Club out by Islip Airport. Uh, March 15th, one show. It's a Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, and it's a fundraiser for North Shore Little League. So uh, please, tickets are 25 bucks, and they're going to go on sale soon, too. So I'll put all this, all be on my website, stevebrandisdv.com. So tell some people if you know that live in those cities. Great. You, you guys want to do plugs now, or do you want to get to the to the picks? Do you have any plugs? I'm just at the Hollywood Improv this weekend. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, birthday um, Saturday, Improv Saturday. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell nice yeah. Oh, the Goobies. The Goobies. That's going to be fun. All right. Um, all right, let's get to the weekend. Okay. So can I can I make a quick observation? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the four AFC East team le- AFC teams left are all like the smallest markets they could be. Um, Jacksonville, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo, like yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of other ones that might be smaller. Indy's kind of small, but they host Super Bowl, so it's a little bit more of a Houston, Jacksonville, Miami. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Uh, I guess the NFL doesn't like making money, so they decided not to fix the playoffs this year. The NFL loves No, but I mean, Kansas City and Buffalo have been in the playoffs for the last, like, probably four years, three years. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, in the last two. It's just been the other team. Tennessee's not that big either. It's not like Tennessee's yeah. huge. Um. But yeah, there are they are compared to you know, New York, Philly, San Francisco, and um, Dallas, and uh, Dallas. Yeah, I guess it looks different. Um, the lines I'm looking on Betsy aside. I'm comparing it to DraftKings. The lines are a little different between the two. No, well, I had my computer going because I was going to bet on my phone. By the way, just between us, and this is just between everyone that's listening, I did I did put a twenty dollars side bet on Jacksonville to beat you, uh, son of a bitch, on the money line though. I, for twenty bucks, I get I get ninety five. So I was like, that's worth it to me. So, but I did do a couple. Don't you ever, on this. don't you ever call me out again for taking the opposite right after we record. No, no, no. That's just like to that's hedge my bets on the blood side. money, blood money, yeah. Steve. I don't believe they're going to win, but that's just in case the cover, if like that's my insurance policy. Now, 
I did a lot of combinations of these four games, and there are some that bring us in now. Every one I did, I'm going to be honest with you, I did take Kansas City. I never took Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So I did Kansas City and then the different combinations of teams I think could win and see what it is. And there was one that I think I'm like, oh, this could pay, and it paid pretty high on DraftKings. Okay. Now, I didn't, I didn't do it yet, but let's just take it game by game. Do you want to start with Kansas City and Jacksonville just because it's going to be – now, the one fact I did hear, and I'm sure you guys heard it too, is that um, – that not Joe Burrow. Um, Trevor Lawrence has never lost on a Saturday. That doesn't matter. It's not, in a, real, high school, it's not a real thing. They're high just finding a narrative, Steve. It doesn't matter. Think about how bad school, he played in the first half, Steve. Think about that. You're falling into the trap of a narrative that isn't real. Okay. Think about how bad he looked and then how bad Brandon Staley coached in the second half to keep him in that game. He played like shit. He's a good player who hasn't yet made that leap, and maybe he makes it next season, but there is no chance for this team short of someone significant getting hurt on Kansas City's side. In no high chance. school, he was 50 and two, and the two games he lost were on Friday nights. In college, he lost two games as well, and they were both in college playoffs, which don't happen on Saturdays. And in the pros, he beat uh, last week on a Saturday. Never lost on a Saturday. The man's never lost on Saturday. There is something to be taken there. Okay. He doesn't know how to lose on that day of the week. I'm just saying. There and are 52, also, a lot of 52 other players on his team that have lost many, many games on Saturday. That doesn't okay. matter. Most of them don't touch the ball as much as he does. But here's the point. Well, that would have been a, I, a better. Th that wouldn't have been a better thing last week in the first half because he touched the ball a lot and he gave the ball away a lot. I don't think they're going to win. Again, I'm with you. I'm yeah. on the money line. No chance. Okay, I take Kansas City on the money line. And the playoffs, I don't fuck around with them. No, I don't I don't really like this. I'm picking winners. Yeah. I think Kansas City's gonna beat them for sure. But I'm saying that's the only reason I gave you my two my reason why and my hedge bet. And that's mm -hmm. why. Now, the rest of them are we they are up for discussion. Very much so. So what's which game do you want to have next? Uh let's go in order of the games played. Yeah. Let's talk right. about let's your New York football. Jersey Giants. Now, full disclosure again, have I been looking at ticket sites for tickets, for three tickets for me and the boys for Saturday night to go down to Philly and watch the game? Yes. Are they expensive? Of course. Uh, is it worth it? I think so. Who talked me out of it? Steve Simone. Why? He goes, okay, let's break it down. You guys and your giant <laughs> stuff sitting up, up in the upper rafters Saturday night, right? Best case scenario, Philly whoops their ass and, you know, like they just, har they like, they, they like drunkenly harass you just for showing up. Best case scenario, but you'll get harassed. Worst case scenario is that the Giants win in like a heartbreaker and they, they don't even let you leave the stadium. Like they, they, ki they kidnap and kill you. And which he's like, you know, in his mind, that's what he thinks is going to happen. And so, of course, I was like, all right, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to make ribs, and we're going to have a little thing here, and we'll do that instead. But I did think about it. So that being said, I don't have any belief that we are going to – like, I believe that we were going to win against Minnesota. I was like, oh, I really believe that we're going to – I have that feeling a little bit, but not as much. The reason I, I still am confident is because for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's that division thing where you play the same guy three times. And two, they didn't play us that great the last game of the season. And by the way, that was their last game. Their last game was against us. And they didn't look great. And they played and they, all their starters. And they played all their starters and we played all our backups. You showed them nothing. Nothing. And we they showed us a, a somewhat now. Two weeks have probably health wise gotten better, and I'm sure they they watched the game and they had a good game plan coming up. And I believe in their coaching staff, but I am not sitting here going. I would much much rather be the Giants than the Cowboys. Much much rather, not because of the travel, not because of being on the road, not be, you know, be, you know all the. I would take it 
any day of the week, the team that we're playing. Because I I just think that they can be Philly's prime to be upset. And then we'll talk about next week, next week. And so I'm, I'm taking the Giants on the money line. Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback left in the NFC by far, but he missed those three games. When he came back, he did not look good at all. And they didn't correct it in that game. And now he's taken another week off. And when you take that many weeks off, you're not going to be as sharp as you could be. And that's why I think the Giants will beat them. I think I really believe the Giants are going to make a run to their Super Bowl. I'm not joking when I say that. You're going to win this week. And then you're going to beat whoever comes out of Dallas and San Francisco. And Brendan, you, you, shut, you shut your you mouth. Have, you, you, have shut. Great, you have Brendan. a great coach. And... I'll be a little honest. I love McDermott. I think he can win us a Super Bowl. But if I could trade him for Dable, I might. <gasps> I might. I might do it. Oh, so, my God. I'm, I'm also taking the Giants on the money line. I think this is going to be – every week there's a shocking upset. This is that shocking upset. I don't think in any other game – like Jacksonville has no chance. They have a 0% chance it's not happening. Dallas – could upset the 49ers, but not likely. And the Bengals and Bills are the most evenly matched playoff game probably in years. They're just, on paper, they they just match up perfectly. So I like the Giants to completely upset the Eagles. And I'm getting plus 280 on the money line. Yeah, I know. I did that one too with the with the Chiefs. So take the Chiefs and the Giants. Mm-hmm. Oh well. By the way, Lucas, what do you feel about that? I mean, do you do you can do you have any? He hates it. I concur, hundred percent. No way. Oh, but oh, it's for sure not working. <laughs> what you think the Giants are going to win? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I I, I think oh. the Giants to win last week. I'm I'm with you. I think they lose to San Fran in the divisional oh. round, but one week at a time. Mm-hmm. One week. Yeah, at one a time. week at a time. God damn it, dude! This is no. So they're playing. They're playing thrilling. Dallas next week. Dude, are you go? You want to get to that? Is that the next one? No, it's it's Buffalo That's Cincinnati. But Buffalo's winning that game. I think the offensive line problems of Cincinnati is very tough to overcome, and Let they ask, keep it where very are they very close. That game? They're playing it in Buffalo. Buffalo. It's not a, not a neutral site. I mean, in all honesty, if I'm a Bengals fan, I'm pretty pissed off that this week isn't a neutral site. Mm-hmm. Even more so than if the Chiefs yeah. and Bills go to the because Cincinnati was winning that football game that that was stopped, and if they had won that game and then won the last game of the year, which they did, they're the one seed, and every game's in Cincinnati, and instead they got to go to Buffalo. So, I think uh, you know the Bills have that home field advantage. Everyone's going to be fired up, and the fact that Buffalo had a bad game last week, and that's all they're hearing is, oh, maybe they're not the best team ever. Now they have that to to feed off of. They're going to come out firing again. And maybe this is the week that uh, DeMar Hamlin joins him on the sideline. So I, I think Buffalo wins a very close, very exciting game. I like Buffalo and I like Joe Burrow over 300 yards passing. Yeah. Yeah. That's like secondary. Both those things to happen. The Bills secondary has holes. That's their big issue right now. I think it's going to be a shootout and I really believe and hope that you guys pull it out. I do think you will. And I think you will need it because it'll be a good test for the week after, which will be Super Bowl part two. Yeah. Because, I mean, if they're playing on a neutral site, we get two Super Bowls this year. You get If you get Bills, Chiefs on a neutral site, that's fucking Super Bowl part one, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that'll be so, in Atlanta. Yeah. Where all the fucking hot ladies are. Hotlanta. Um, I I believe that the Bills will win too. I really do. I'm, I've gone back and forth on this a lot, and I can see that I I I don't. It's not. I believe in Joe Burrow, dude. I really, really do, and I think you guys are going to have to get a lead and hang out in front of it. Like you're going to have to hang to a ten point lead, because if that guy sniffs blood towards the end, oh. That's what they have the ability to do now. They couldn't do it last year. Now they have 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 that running game. They have Cook. They have Singletary. Off the field. Yep. Yep. Because he's a dangerous man. And now I do. I I believe. But he's not a dangerous man if he's on his back every other play. And that's what they have to do. They have to get to him. If they can keep 
him, you know, protected, then it's going to be a problem. But if they get in, you know, he did it last year. I don't know how he did it last year. You know, can he do it again with a, with a really damaged offensive line? I'm not sure, but um, he's a dangerous, that's, I'm not a hunt. That's my one hesitation by not going bills. Like, all right, I see this one happen for the bills because he, I, anything within a, a, a score, he can do it. Yeah. He's got Josh Allen ability. Um, so, but I'll, I would, yeah, I assume all three of us will take. So I've done that one too. Okay. And then the last game, San Francisco and the Cowboys. This is where I, I we're going to differ. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know what you saw on the Cowboys that makes you think that they're going to walk into, or was it, did you see San Francisco? I don't know. Did they play down? They definitely played down, to and it, it came down to Geno Smith doing Geno Smith things, which is having a bad turnover at the worst possible time that swung that game. Does San Francisco have a ton of talent on offense? Yes. But is Brock Purdy going to remain perfect throughout the playoffs? No. And I think at some point, his rookie quarterback is going to show and I think it could be this week against Dallas, and I, I like Dallas to to upset another very close game that Dallas just finds a way to win. They just, just took down. A, I, they I, just I, took down Tom Brady. I, I, the whole thing about not being able to win a playoff game is done. They took out the greatest quarterback of all time. They've got swagger. They're a huge underdog. They got nothing to lose. San Francisco has everything to lose. They're being told you guys are going to win the Super Bowl. And they have a rookie quarterback who the pressure, it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter on him. And eventually I think he's got this. I think he's yeah. got that. He's, he's got this. He's, he's, he's disagree. as cool as they come. Disagree. Yeah. This is the week. I mean, watch, watch it. Watch it pretty in college. I'll say that he didn't have shit for receivers. He had Brees Hall as a running back who was good. But – and and they were a top twenty ranked team when Iowa State was never good. So I, I think he's got that dog in him. I think he's. I just don't know like why he would lose this week. Because I said. I think so. this this offense is built perfectly for him. He he can he doesn't have to. He has options to go deep if he wants, but he's got protection. He's got quick slants. He's got playmakers that are right next to him, behind him. You know, it's not like he's got to drop back and then pray for for protection and throw the ball to Justin Jefferson down the field. Quick slants to Kittle, quick slants to Samuel, hand the ball off to McCaffrey. All that makes you comfortable, dude. When you when you get two first downs and you haven't really had to make anything happen that anyone that, that beyond high school couldn't accomplish as the quarterback, that's a great feeling. Because now you go, dude, and now I'm comfortable and I'm caught up to the speed of the game. And I really haven't been relied on yet. I can't wait to become part of this game. That's what I think Purdy's got in him. And so we'll see. I I, I disagree with you on this one. I do. I think San Francisco. I don't think they that's walk fine. all I, over. I them, figured. I, I figured you guys. I figured you guys would. Um, and that's why I'm going to place mine, and I'm taking the Cowboys. But if you want to go ahead and take the 49ers, feel free. Someone's going to win Lucas money because the other three games are correct. Um, I think, I mean, look, I'm on, I'm on 49ers. Lucas, if you're with me, I think we should take the 49ers. I, 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 I am with you. I think the, the gambler in me does want to take Dallas because everybody is probably taking San Fran, but I have Kyle Shanahan against Mike McCarthy. I'll take Shanahan. Well, any day of the week, dude, can you put your, what, what if it's close and everyone's like, Oh wow. In the first half, you don't think Shanahan's going to walk out and game like just, Play ch- chess when ch- and McCarthy's going to be like, wait, what? You know, it's like, give me a break, dude. And then you rely on the, the, their defense. San Francisco, if I, you're like, oh, it's still close. I got to rely on my defense. I'm taking San Francisco's defense. And you can't over discount the Cowboys defense. Yeah, and you can't discount the fact that the Cowboys kicker is going through a confidence issue right now that's at the worst time. Yeah. You know how many games he's played since uh, Monday? And also, San Fran's had Zero. Two, two extra days off, haven't they? Yeah, two extra days off. Yeah, give me San Fran. You're not going to convince me. <laughs> and uh, am I am I making the bet on my end? Because you can't with your phone. 
Well, yeah, well, I mean, hold on. I just, I just did, uh, I just punched in the numbers, Lucas, and taking San Fran, you'll win four hundred and thirty-one dollars. But if we mm -hmm. take uh, Dallas, you'll win eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars. So, oh, well, that changes it. Yeah, have have some balls, and you double your money. <laughs> or be wrong. I'm still going San Fran. Not. Still, still San Fran. Yeah. Kansas City. Add more. Hold on. Giants. Okay. If you could do it on your Eagles. end, I'm, I'm putting in the Cowboys on my end. <laughs> and San Francisco. Okay. On the money line. Okay. 50 bucks would net us 5, 10, 90. Damn. Yeah, better odds than Bet DSI. Bet DSI was yeah. four and change. But Chiefs on the money line, Giants on the money line, Bills on the money line, 49ers on the money line. Bingo. Uh, also, or, I'll or say Cowboys. one, one – Brent, I, I won't convince you with this, but I'll add one more fact in. Dan Quinn interviewed for the Broncos job this week when he should be prepping for San Fran. Yeah, but Ken Dorsey's interviewing There's for just Carolina. A Ken Dorsey's interviewing for Carolina. This is what happens. You're telling me that the game plan isn't already in place before he Well, leaves? with two extra days. Game two plan extra, maybe Ken Dorsey. They, they 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 have that all set. I think the the interviewing stuff it, it's not really a distraction because if you go, you might have interviewed before before the the but, Cowboys even played. Brian Dable had the game of his life as an offensive coordinator against the Chiefs when he was interviewing for jobs leading up to that game. So I don't think you can really put a lot into that. Brian Dable and the Bills had. Just an absolute explosion, and he had, I think, multiple interviews that week. So it doesn't matter. Winning on Saturday doesn't matter, and interviewing for coaching jobs doesn't matter. These guys know what they're, they're doing. First, we're, we're week. We're in week what? This is week 19, 20? This is week 20, 20 of the season. So they know what they're doing at this point. Okay, great. Mr. Know-it-all. Mr. fucking snotty pants know-it-all. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Who wins and who loses come this weekend? I can't wait, fellas. I really can't. Mm -hmm. It's very, very exciting. This is my fit. Like, this is it. This is so fucking awesome. And our teams are in it. Can you fucking mm -hmm. believe this shit? Yeah. Oh, man. I feel alive. I mean, guys. we're we expected to be here. I think you are shitting your pants. I'm going nuts. You don't belong at all, but you're here. You are. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It really is. It's like, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like playing with the casino's money. Like yeah. you, like your life, Brenton, you know? Basically. Playing with the casino's money from here on out. Um, that's it, I think. Anything else you guys? Uh, oh, Biden found his fucking top secret papers in his Corvette. That's my favorite story <laughs> of the week. That's all I heard, and I was like, I don't need to know anything else. That's it. Anything else that happens, bombs, this, poverty, that, crime and guns, this. Joe Biden kept top secret files in his Corvette makes me very happy. And that like, you know, think about him. He's driving around trying to get pussy from Jill showing off in his Corvette with his aviators on. And he goes, you really want to see something fucking cool? Opens up that glove box and pulls out some top secret papers. That's fucking cool as shit, dude. Cool as shit. I'm all into people from now on. Steal what you want. It seems like it's not anyone's problem. Like, Seems like it's not a Trump problem, or it seems like it's like real easy to get shit out of top secret stuff. Like who's who's guarding the fucking top secret shit? That should be our fucking issue, I think, going forward. Just take what you want. Nothing should be top secret anymore. All open to everyone. Open books. That would be cool. How about that? Uh, what's the odds podcast does not share the opinions of Steve Ranazizi. He is a rogue agent. And if we are all being put on a list, just know that it's just one man's opinion and it's not uh, that of Lucas or Brenton. I don't want to get banned off of YouTube, but uh, I think we should open up uh, all <laughs> top secret information to everyone. <laughs> uh, where did we get banned? One, oh yeah. We got banned from one of our episodes got taken down because we mentioned the cat. Oh, I don't want to say it again, but the, uh, you know, uh, that one, thing, that thing that know, happened, those, those crazy kooks that went into that place where we yeah. all kind of, you know, send our guys to, you know, represent us anyway. Look, you know how I feel. Yeah. Anarchy. Go for it.
become part of it. <laughs> That's what I think. Uh, what else? That's it. Uh, I'm a, I got a new deodorant. And oh, it's, it's great. Uh, Cassie doesn't want me using aluminum deodorants. So she got me this natural okay. kind. And I thought that they were supposed to smell, but it's called sugar cookie. And I, I smell fantastic. It smells like a bakery in here right now. Let me see this. It's, under your uh, armpits? Under my armpits, yeah. It's, it's just, it's really good stuff. Can't recommend it enough. Hungry. It was, uh, it's called... What is the deodorant brand? It's called like it's, natural it's or naked. Native, or whatever. It's, it's, native yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's limited. It's limited edition. Oh, wow. you, so is Brenton. Go and get it. I uh, can't. Yeah. can't plug that. Are they a sponsor on the show? They should be. It smells what? fucking amazing in here. Add them to the list of our sponsors. Yeah, Je my oldest, you know, he's got to use, they all got to use deodorant now because they stink. So he's trying Tom's because he's like, oh, I want to go all natural. But he, I'm like, dude, you fucking stink still, bro. You smell. So look I'll try the, this. What's look it called? Native. It's called Native. Native. Got it. All right. We'll look into it. Thank you, Native, um, for being in the, added to the list of sponsors. Um, hey, can I, can anything I else? real quick? Yeah, go uh, for they it. Ha they have a spiked eggnog flavor that is on clearance mm. for two dollars. Hell yeah! So that must that, that must not be a good one. Well, we'll know Brenton's made it when there's a chicken. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, a turkey <laughs> farm <laughs> flavor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll know he's big time then. Uh, all right, that's it, guys. Mm. Um, enjoy your weekend of football. I we're right, so go with us. We know what we're talking about. Uh, and this is going to be fun. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait to be back next week going, holy shit, we're one step closer. Yeah. Uh, that's the podcast. Let some miles know about it, and uh, we'll see you next week, bitches. Go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. For joining me. How you been? How you been? Ladies, and Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. Back, back. Steve Ranazizi. I'm the guy.